Sal, what are you doing? Does that smell good? Don't knock it over, okay? Are you biting my phone? Yeah, thank you very much. No, don't knock it over. <laughs> Welcome back everyone. I'm Robin from This Vlog's Neat. And a few weeks ago, Jerry's parents were in Jamaica. And on their way home, Jerry's dad, who is also named Jerry, gave me a call and he said, I'm standing here at duty free. What do you want me to take home for you? So luckily for me, I had already done my research, I knew that Jerry's dad, for some reason, could only take home two or three bottles, depending on which bottles that I chose. And I knew what they had available at the Duty Free in Jamaica by browsing their website. So after doing some research, you know, scouring the Reddit internet, as well as some other like YouTube channels, I picked out three bottles that I wanted him to bring home for me. The first one I asked him to grab me was Charlie's JB. I also asked him to grab me a bottle of the Worthy Park Single Estate Reserve. And the third thing I asked for, which I do not have because unfortunately it was broken in transit, is the Money Musk White Overproof. I'm okay with that one being lost because it was only $13. The reason I chose Charlie's JB was because you can only get this in Jamaica. It's kind of marketed, or at least in the 90s, was marketed towards more of the rural crowd of Jamaica and didn't actually reach the urban market until 2015. I chose Worthy Park Single Estate Reserve because you can get this in the US. However, in Jamaica, this was like $28, $24, dollars somewhere in that range. Whereas if I wanted to pick this up in the US, I'd be paying at least like 65-ish dollars for it if I could find it. So that's why I went with these. Um, let me tell you a little bit about each one of them. So Charlie's JB is a overproof Jamaican rum. Um, I believe it's mostly unaged, but there is a little bit of color to it. It doesn't say anything about aging or any additives or anything like that. So I'm not sure if it has some age on it, perhaps something that went into this blend does have some age on it, but this is a blend, the Trelawney blend. It's sitting at 63% ABV, so nice and overproof. And it's produced by the Trelawney Rum Company. On the back, you can see manufactured and bottled by J. Ray and Nephew Limited. So Trelawney Rum Company owned by J. Ray and Nephew that also owns Appleton and is actually owned by Campari itself. So according to the internet, JB stands for John Crow Batty. Batty? Batty. B-A-T-T-Y. John Crow Batty. John Crow is a vulture, I guess, and Batty is a butt. So JB stands for essentially vulture's ass. And as you can see, there's like this bird and some vultures flying around. So that kind of confirms the vulture um, theory here for where it got its name. As the story goes, back in the day, the workers that worked at these distilleries weren't able to buy the products that were nice, high quality, or they were being exported or sold to other people. What they did have access to was the heads and the tails of the distillate. Now, this is a lot harsher and uh, we'll call it more flavorful, if you will. And if you mix these together, you get quite a, uh, an aggressive spirit. So that's kind of where the vulture's ass name comes in is because you had to have the, the belly of a vulture and it also tastes flavorful. <laughs> the name Charlie's on the other hand, I believe comes from Edwin Charlie. 
He was a premium rum merchant and owned his own shop in Kingston and his life goal was to create the ultimate perfect rum blend. And his rums, the label of his rums, eventually got bought out by J. Ray and Nephew. So I think that's where Charlie's comes from. But anyways, now Worthy Park, you've probably heard of, especially if you are a Jamaican rum fan. What do I wanna say about this? Worthy Park has been around for a while. However, they did close in the 1960s and then they reopened in 2005. They revamped the distillery, have all new stills. The operations are a lot newer relative to the rest of the distilleries on the island. In 2007, they released Rum Bar, which is their unaged overproof rum. A few years later, they released Rumbar Gold, which is a four-year age statement. They produce both a high ester rum and a light rum. However, they do not use dunder or muck or anything like that. The way they are achieving that high ester quality is by altering the fermentation, again, without the use of dunder and muck. What they're doing is they're taking molasses, they're adding in some sugarcane juice, as well as some crushed sugarcane stalks and using those sugarcane stalks essentially as a yeast starter. They're letting that ferment for about two to three weeks and the fermentation is not temperature controlled at all. However, for their light rum, they are doing a 30 hour fermentation with temperature control. The distillate of their high ester rum is said to have about 900 ppm of esters, volatile esters. Yeah, let's try the two rums that I got from Jamaica. I'm gonna taste the Worthy Park Single Estate Reserve first because this is at a lower ABV. So this is sitting at 45% ABV and because it's aged for about seven to 10 years, it does have some good color on it. It's aged in first fill ex bourbon barrels. And there is a nice caramel, slightly copper color to it. Now, actually, before I taste, I do want to give a huge shout out to the Patreons. Thank you guys so much for helping to support the channel. I really appreciate you guys. And if you, the viewer, would also like to join us over on Patreon, I've got a link in the description below. Otherwise, different ways of supporting the channel are like all the YouTube things, right? Like, subscribe, comment, share this video with your friends, uh, bring the notification bell. I guess I ring it click the notification bell, yeah, and watch more of my videos. <laughs> so there's a lot of fruit, there's a little bit of waxiness, and it almost reminds me of like a citronella candle. Yeah, there's definitely some like orange in here, but there's also some mango and some pineapple. They're like over ripened fruits. There's also like a sweet caramely thing a little bit of like a roasty character too, which is interesting. There's lots of vanilla, like a sweet vanilla icing and some coconut. On the palate, there's a ton of fruit right off the bat. There are lots of tropical fruit, similar to what I was getting on the nose. There's that caramel and vanilla as well. And I'm getting a lot of spiciness too. It's like pepper, yeah, there's like a lot of mixed spices. It's almost like borderline a chai spice mix. There's some green plantains as well, but like almost if they were grilled or charred and then like coated with some dark brown sugar. I think this is very nice and a good introduction into funky Jamaican rums. So if you're not quite ready to like dive head first into Hamden <laughs> or, uh, or any of the like white overproof high ester Jamaican rums, Worthy Park might be a really great one to consider, especially if you're in Jamaica and you can get your hands on this for under $30. I think that's a great value. Okay, so let's move on to Charlie's JB. So in the glass, this looks pretty clear, um, but like I said, in the bottle, there is a little bit of color to it. Okay, so right off the bat, on the nose, it's like 
you melted down Werther's original and mixed it with some sweet wood glue. <laughs> There's also some banana peppers. Again, they're sweet. I'm getting a lot of vanilla too. There's a lot of fruit and fruit juice. Um, it's like pineapple juice. There's some plantains as well. And then like apple juice that you let sit in the sun for a really long time. pants like that so the people wear it now wow this is really fun and good nose wise mm-hmm mm. that's good banana banana yeah so for 63 percent this does not have a lot of heat um it's quite nice and that Werther's vanilla wood glue thing comes through right off the bat. There's also some powdered sugar covered strawberries. I'm getting some white pepper, a touch of nail polish remover, and like some licorice too. I think this is really fun. It was $13. Sure, this was $13. Wow, that's very good. Mm -hmm. Um, so all in all, I'm very happy with the two rums that Jerry's dad, named Jerry, came home with for me. And I think they're really delicious and I'm happy to have them. So if you are coming back from Jamaica, what rum should you bring home from Duty Free? I think there are a lot of options. It depends on what you like. I'm a big fan of overproof unaged rums. And if you're not, there's a lot of Appleton that you should probably take home with you. We do have good access to Appleton in the US, but I think the prices there are probably better. And maybe before making this suggestion, I should have checked the prices and compared them. But I think Charlie's JV was something great to have in my rum collection as well as Worthy Park Single Estate. And for the price, like, yeah, $13 and like $28 or whatever it was, that's an amazing price. Thank you to Jerry's dad, Jerry, for picking these rums up for me. I think they're really delicious. And I hope the Money Musk didn't smell too bad when it broke on your way home. <laughs> if you guys have also gone to Jamaica and brought home some rums, let me know which ones you chose to bring home and why in the comments below. My um, ring light broke, so now it's really dark in here.